Hey guys, so we're going to do a quick comparison between the Trigicon MRO and the Aimpoint Duty RDS. So, first thing I'm going to do right out of the gate is we're going to go in boxes. So, this is a packaging that Aimpoint offers. Um, just, yeah, they don't put a lot of effort into the boxes, but whatever. Um, inside, there's plenty of foam, but it doesn't have that nice uh, Trigicon box feeling. So this is the, uh, if I can show you the Trigicon box, these things come with little mini cases amongst themselves. So even if you don't want to use it anymore, you can use it as really anything for storage. As you can see, I've had it for a while, it has some dust on it. I just really want to hit that real quick. Um, kind of one point for Trigicon, I guess, and it was packaging. But let's go into the whole unit itself, okay? So both units are one X's. So a limit eye relief on that. So we can knock that right out of the park. Um, the Trigicon MRO lens is 25 millimeters, where the RDS is 18. Both are two MOA. Both of these are red dots. I'm pretty sure you can get some green dots. Mine for the uh, Trigicon, mine didn't. I didn't get that model. Both mounts are uh, on these ones, which obviously you can replace the mounts. But they're set up with like an Allen wrench. This one has two. As you can see, the uh, aim point only has the one. Um, both adjustment knobs are flush. However, you can do this one with a bullet, and you have to use the Allen wrench that you mount it with the on the weapon to do this one, which is a one less point in my opinion for aim point. I wish they would have kept it where. You could just adjust it in the field. I mean, bring the tool, whatever, no big deal. Um, the knobs, obviously, to turn this thing on, um, you have the turn knob, which is fine. And this one, you have the pressure pad, which is kind of a nice feature on that point. Um, I'm gonna open these caps. Alrighty, so the weight of the MRO is 4.1 ounces. And the aim point is coming in at, if I can find it, I think 3.7 ounces, if I remember right. Um, both of these have a little red coating on them. Right here, as you can tell. So, that's the, that's pretty good. I think there's a name for the coating, it's optical coating, uh, anti-reflex coating. There it is. Um, so they're both around 450 bucks, give or take, um, to $500. So, I mean, you're really, at this point in time, you're paying what you for the name when it comes to price. Um, this one is waterproof. When I say this one, I mean the aim point is waterproof up to 80 feet. And the MRO is waterproof up to 100 feet. So I guess if you're like if you like to go swimming with your rifles well they're both pretty good however the yeah, mro is going to take it there housing is a little bit better um brightness setting for the mro is going to be eight settings two for which are night vision and six are daytime with the aim point if i remember right you have nine settings i believe and i think the first Four are night vision compatible and the rest are daytime. So there's that. So really when it comes to night vision is both compatible. So that's, that's a win. The housing material for the MRO is 7075 T6. And the housing doesn't say. It just says a forged aluminum. So I feel like that they're probably both pretty tough I mean yeah give or take this one definitely feels heavier obviously which we've already determined that but I mean I don't know what you're gonna do with your weapon that you have to worry about it too too bad but Trigicon is winning in the durability settings I will say a pet peeve of mine when it comes to the Trigicon after owning it for a year is when you do adjust it to zero you can't really hear an audible click when you're adjusting your zero to me, that's kind of a butt pain. Um, I haven't adjusted the DDRDS yet, but we'll 
Let's see if we can hear a click when we do it. Yeah, clearly audible. And this one is no, I don't have a screwdriver at my disposal, so I show you right now, but I don't. But take more for it. I think I've actually, if you look at some of my videos online when I was zeroing this, I'll I make it a note that you cannot hear it and it kind of messes with you just a little bit. But once again, guys, I'm not going to drag this video on too long. Side by side comparison of the two. Um, they both are great optics. I have um, experience really a lot more in this one. This one is actually a uh, tester, but I, everywhere online I, I found to be great. I haven't heard anybody complain about it yet. Um, being about the same price point, you really can't go wrong on either option. I will say that the dot on this, if I can try to show you. I don't know if the camera's going to pick up on it, guys, so bear with me. It's kind of, you probably can't see it on the camera, but it's very, very uh, um, star clustery. And this one, if it's even on. We'll give it a kind of comparison you can see. I mean, I know they're not really giving you much justice. They both look like the same star cluster. So I will say that looking through the optic, aim point is a little crisper. Yeah, actually a lot crisper. So that definitely kind of helps a little bit if you're zeroing. But once again, not a big deal breaker. Um, both are used in law enforcement settings. So you really can't complain too much. You know, I mean, obviously Leo's are using both these optics right now with no issues. So yeah, like I said, about 450 to 500 bucks in line. Quick little comparison video for you guys. I don't want to keep you here all day with this. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped make a decision between the two.